Hey, my lovely friends, let's learn more vocabulary with the late Christopher Hitchens. The words, definitions, and plenty of example sentences is always in the description. <laughs> Thank you, um, Your Reverence. Uh, <laughs> and the first word of the day is reverence, but let's talk about the verb form first, which is revere. To revere someone or something means to respect them very much. Another good word to learn here is to venerate. The noun is pronounced differently. It is reverence. So he says, Thank you, your reverence is kind of like saying thank you, your honor. So revere as a verb, reverence as the noun. For that suspiciously terse, grudging introduction. Thank For that suspiciously terse, grudging introduction. So just a couple of good words there. One is terse. A terse response is brief and could be interpreted as impolite. So if I ask my friend a question and she went, no, that might be a terse response. A grudging introduction perhaps contains some nice words, but it also suggests that the person uh, does not want to give the speaker any compliments, really. So they do that despite themselves, grudging. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, very much for coming. Thank you for laying on an evening of weather to remind me of my English boyhood. This is a great phrase. Thank you for laying on an evening of weather. So <laughs> this is a nice way of saying that now I'm experiencing the same kind of weather that I uh, used to experience in England. In other ways to maybe feel at home as I always do when I visit Sydney, which is uh, the only place I've so far visited where if you stay in the neighborhood I am staying, you go for your daytime or it might be a nighttime constitutional walk and you, you a constitutional walk i gather is just a uh, walk for a relaxation or exercise wonder exactly how to get back and you stop someone and say excuse me you find yourself saying am i uh, headed for the rocks <laughs> question i've asked myself many a time and on and on many a midnight stroll but it, only in city do they say yeah no worries <laughs> Good place for dangerous ideas, a chit chat, in other words. Uh, a risk taking kind of a spot. So, this is <laughs> a very typical response that you'll hear in Australia. It speaks to the fact that people here tend to be laid back. Rocks? No worries. Um, I'm sorry for that reason, uh, to have, well, partly for that reason, to have missed your darkness at dawn a moment um, the other day. Um, because a lot of my early training in the apocalyptic came from the study of Australian letters. Uh, when I was a boy, I was very fond of the writing of Neville Shute, a um, town like Alice. Um, I particularly loved In the Wet, uh, No Highway, remember No Highway? Um, perhaps I'm giving away my age a bit. But, but of course, um, and most, I think most memorably, On the Beach, where the last people mm. on earth wait in Australia to see what kind of death is going to be brought to them on the prevailing winds. On the prevailing winds. Let's talk about the adjective prevailing. Okay, so we typically use this word to refer to views or ideas that are shared by many, many people, but prevailing winds are strong and dominant. There were lots of ways, I now realize, tons of ways in which Neville Shute couldn't write. But he could write about the, uh, the inevitable um, and in, about the, the possibility of extinction. In other words, that nature might not know we were here. Um, the great challenge to our self-esteem, to our solipsism. The, the to our solipsism. Okay, so this is a good word. Solipsism. Yep, spelling is a little tricky, but I think I've got it right. <laughs> solipsism is... Uh, the state of being obsessed with yourself. So we tend to use this word to carry a negative connotation. The adjective is solipsistic with a different stress pattern. Could be a point in evolution where evolution that hadn't noticed we'd arrived wouldn't even notice that we'd gone either. And beautifully done, as some of you will have seen by Stanley Kubrick on the screen, where as the inevitable gets nearer all the time, the churches decide it's time for a moment of uplift. 
and out come the Salvation Army girls with their tambourines and their tins, and the churches throw open their doors, and there's a big banner saying, repent. Uh, there is still time, brother, it reads. Okay, so I'm just going to end today's lesson with the word repent in the religious context. Uh, sometimes this word is used to talk about admitting that you have committed sins and you may want to mend your way, do things differently to atone for your sins. We pronounce this one, repent. Anyways, I sincerely hope you have learned at least one or two words with this video lesson.